After doing one controversial thing, I feel it's time to do another. And this is one I've wanted to do for a long time. However, this isn't controversial for attacking a poorly represented group of people. More... well, I'll get onto that when it comes. This episode starts in the Friendship Express to the long-awaited Equestria Games, with Rainbow Dash giving a speech. And no matter what your sport is, we gotta give it our best, because we've all got a genuine shot at Ponyville Gold! With the possible exception of Bulk Biceps, Fluttershy, and me. I mean, we're good and all, but we're up against the Wonder Bolts in the Aerial Relay, so gold's kind of a stretch. Let's not kid ourselves. Have you ever heard the phrase, if a guy is convinced he'll die tomorrow, he'll find a way to make it happen, Rainbow Dash? Star Trek references! After the credits, they arrive at the Crystal Empire, and while Spike is sawing out the bags... The meat-eating pony strike again! Actually, Kane says summoned him because apparently he's a bit of a big shot after helping defeat King Sombra. I don't see that going to his head. See that? That's you! That I see going to Spike's head. Kiran says Spike to light the torch at the opening ceremony. You'd be the very first dragon in the history of the Equestria Games to do so. In Crystal Empire, we eat dragon. Spike accepts and at the opening ceremony. Not since South Park have I seen a better animated crowd. Ooh. Although Spike needs help to and pretty much up the ladder to light the torch. That said, I don't miss Harsh when he is helping much. Mr. the Dragon! Count to ten. One, two, three, thousand, fourteen thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand! Oh great, he's choking. How? Everybody's joking. Now, the clock's run out. Time's up. Over. Blow. Snap back to reality. And Twilight lights the torch for him. Which starts Spike obnoxiously believing he can start fires with willpower. I did it, Spike. I cast a spell to do it for you. I think it's good that she was honest with him. And heck, it's a lot less annoying than him making that constipated face throughout this episode. Miss, step right over here. Unicorns will no longer be admitted without a disabling spell. Isn't that racist? Actually, I think Rarity has a right reaction to that. <laughs> Next, Spike wants to do more for the Crystal Ponies, which, despite what Twilight said, still comes off as attention grabbing. But Spike, haven't you heard? You better lose yourself in the music the moment you own it. You better never let it go, girl. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You better. Oh, we're the Wonder Bolts and we're super fast and we're from Cloudsdale, which is part of Equestria. <laughs> that we like best and we're proud and we're fast and we like it because it really has nice trees. Why? 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 Well, that song seems to go on forever. The final event is the ice archery thing, and it's actually quite funny to see Pinky bouncing through the crowd. During all this, Spike is moping in his hotel room. Well, yeah, do you know how many bits that room cost? When Twilight comes looking for him. No more hiding out. You're coming with me. Now. Those aren't your average arrows. They freeze whatever part of the target they hit. Whoever encases their entire target in ice first wins. Isn't that really subjective? I don't know, it just sounds like that sport relies on a judge's call more so than a score-based system. While Spike and Twilight arrive, just as one of the archers shoots a nearby cloud with an ice arrow. Oh no! Some pony cut the disabling spell! There isn't time! Wait, why would they put an anti-magic spell on the princesses as well as all the guards? Have they not seen a Celtic Rangers match? Spike uses his fire breath on the cloud, turning it into rain for some reason. And after seeing that Ponyville got the most medals, we get our moral of the day. Sometimes to feel good about yourself, you've got to let go of the past. That way, when the time comes to let your greatness fly, you'll be able to light up the whole sky. And that's the end of the episode. But not the end of the story. For those of you who may not know, going into Season 4, the two biggest Brony YouTubers were Digibrony and Brony Curious, both of whom were known for pointing out the show's flaws more so than previous reviewers of the show. At least from what I heard, since I watched Equestria Girls before I saw the series. But those two's popularity spawned a lot of Me Too's, who would not so much highlight the flaws as much as blow them out of proportion. And so every episode during Season 4 was played by some drama. The Lauren Faust leaving drama. The Princess Twilight drama. The Pinky drama. The Breezy drama. The Granny Smith drama. And so on. Things got so bad that... 
From what I heard, many people in the fandom started harassing the show staff on social media and was a contributory factor in Amy Keating Rogers leaving. And of course, when Equestria Daily announced that Equestria Games would air during Season 4, I got a feeling of dread about it. For me, the biggest sin this episode commits is Friendship is Magic has done this lesson before. In episodes like Sonic Green Boom, Hurricane Fluttershy, and of course Power Ponies, that was also a Spike episode, I'm not saying they did it better, and I'm not saying they did it worse, but I do think they could have utilised the assets of this episode better. Like how when Spike finds out he's a hero to the Crystal Ponies, he starts to worry he's taking attention away from the athletes who he thinks should be getting it, and the episode is him finding a way of diverting attention back to them, or something. But the drama pretty much overshadows the episode, not least because it made no sense. I mean, what did they want? Pony cool runnings? In the end, this episode serves as a horrible reminder for me of how bad season 4 was. And a lesson I took from this episode is, if you put something out there, doesn't matter if it's on national TV or a small YouTube channel, what you say can carry real weight. I was sold on Friendship is Magic on the message, love and tolerate. And the brony analyst smashed that to pieces. Before I finish, I want to give you a quick update. As those of you who may have been counting may know, my next video is my 100th. Sort of. And I want to do something new to freshen things up a bit. I won't spoil the surprise, but it may take a bit longer than usual to get it done, but I'm fairly sure most of you will like it. Well, until next time.